Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I titled this message, Those Who Never Trusted the Entertainment Industry. Those Who Never Trusted the Entertainment Industry. Now, you may have come across your share of people in your family who questioned some things with regard to the entertainment industry. If you had ever received an opportunity or knew of someone who received an opportunity to become a a lister or B lister C D it really doesn't matter the point is is that they were offered an opportunity and for some individuals they turned it down others did end up going along with some things for a while but realized that uh, this isn't my cup of tea these people want too much from me I'm bailing out and then of course there were those who didn't make it very far due to drugs alcohol various abuses and so on and so forth. There were stories that had been passed down to me about different relatives who did receive opportunities, okay? Except these were short-lived opportunities. So they didn't get to make it to the top per se, but they got to speak to people along the way who gave them information. And some of the information was not flattering. It was not good. It was not something that you wanted to tell everybody about in the hood, okay? And so for some individuals, they actually got their opportunities through brotherhoods and sisterhoods. And some of you all know the various names that are out there. Some of you all are already affiliated while others are not, but you do know family members and friends who are. We question some things, not just my generation, which is Generation X, but those before us questioned some things with regard to the entertainment industry. And as we questioned, there was more and more ways to manipulate, to silence, to deem people as crazy, tin hats, and you don't know what you're talking about. Now, it doesn't help when you got individuals who are, in fact, off a bit. Something's not quite right mentally. And so they're going down all sorts of rabbit holes and some of which they know information, others they don't, but they piece together some crazy stories. You know, they try to take a puzzle, if you will, a puzzle piece and try to force that puzzle piece into <laughs> a puzzle that, wait a minute, who put this piece in here? This doesn't even belong. OK, and so this is why for some individuals, they just don't believe anything that others say about the entertainment industry because of some of the crazy statements and just fanciful thoughts, opinions and strange behaviors that some people have. But when the truth is evident and no matter who's given that truth, the truth is evident. You should be listening. You should be paying attention because some of God's people who started off as God's people are not God's people and are actually making money off of Christianity, Christian. OK, they're making money off of the gospel. But do they really believe it themselves? And some of them really don't. It's just a job for them. OK. I know it's a cutting truth, a hard truth, because some of these mainstream media type of figures in the Christian arena, as well as in the worldly arena, you want to believe that they're authentic. You want to believe that they're real. You want to believe that they genuinely care about you. And that's not true. Okay, that's not true. They care about their pockets. They care about their families. They care about their circles but they do not care about you. And how do you know this? Because you can just simply look at some of the interviews <laughs> and pay close attention to the body language. You could tell when you ask a question of someone and that person comes up with excuses or they will come up with anything to keep from answering your question directly. They'll talk about everything but this subject here, okay?
Now, those who have dared come out to tell the truth about who all is so-called running things, which we know better, they have also experienced their share of losses. So there is no more money coming down the pipeline like it once was. They're no longer in our faces like they once were. They are not the top of, you know, the chain. Many of these people were already connected. I had to tell one of my sons this. I'm like, listen, I know you're on this pursuit. However, you got to understand many of these people are already connected. Mothers, sisters, brothers, cousins, you know, people who have worked with folks in various industries, they are already connected. Also, when they're recruiting, there are those at the top who have their season and their time to recruit people from different cities, states, you name it. And if your city or state is not selected, guess what? You are not going to be found. <laughs> If you're not there at special events and putting out all sorts of money and you don't have all sorts of sponsorships, you're not going to be found. You see, you've got to have money in order to make money. You've got to have connections in order to be connected to not just anyone, but the right group. And so we've had these conversations time and time again. I've showed him all sorts of examples ever since he was in oh my goodness elementary school because he's been wanting to do this whole thing with the entertainment industry for quite some time he's even come on this channel to talk about some of the things that he has discovered in his pursuit now the questions that we asked over the years old school we asked questions like why is it that that black woman is surrounded around all those middle class white women why is it that they're so into her like that? Who suddenly made this person all so important, a great representation of a successful black woman? And by success is definition, you know, this is a bunch of white people making these decisions. Okay. These were questions that were being asked. Take one guess. We were asking these questions with regard to Oprah Winfrey, okay? Because we knew a long time ago that Oprah was in the in crowd, that Oprah was one of those who was trying to put a good face out there to represent for black people. And there were other blacks like Bill Cosby who Hey, everybody had to make their start somewhere, right? They didn't always have this positive look for the black community. There were times where, what did they have to do? They had to act in stereotypical roles initially, right? Or somewhere at some point in their careers, and so this is this sort of thing that was going on. We questioned, why was there so many black athletes that were marrying white women? We questioned this sort of thing. And we wanted to know who is around them that is promoting so much of this. I mean, men who for many years had no interest in interracial dating. Matter of fact, some who were vocal about wanting to give back to the black community, but let's just stop that money from getting back to the black community. Let's place some distractions before these black men. You see, we questioned some things when it came down to some of these top notch A-lister celebrities. And were they really who they claim to be? Some of them claim to be heterosexual, but when they weren't in those macho roles, they were at parties and they were surrounded by individuals who were from the gay community, from the queer community, things of that sort. So there was no authenticity that was going on. 
Matter of fact, some of these people, they had so many different personalities, you didn't know who they really were. And even now, that's why it's almost laughable to ask somebody to be authentic when they have gone through so much trauma and drama. They don't know what that is. A person who has various personalities, you can't ask them to be something that they have not ever been, at least in their mindset. Who exactly am I? <laughs> you see. We questioned some things, especially when it came down to money. Follow the money trail. I mean, these political figures, where are you getting your money? Oh, then you start looking at this long list and you see the patterns of the same old, same old people who, or groups who keep supporting certain individuals. And what exactly are they saying that they keep getting that support, you see? We were also questioning, and I'm, and I'm putting this audio together simply because I want those that will be here long before, or long after, I should say, long after I'm gone, to continue to question and continue to find out information and continue to expose. And don't let the foolishness get the best of you or get the best of others because the plan has always been to manipulate people to go into their pockets and pay for things that they really don't need pay for people that are really not beneficial to them support organizations that they're not even thinking about you but thank you very much for your monies you see when there's a political movement and agenda, when there is all sorts of chaos going on all around the world, there are always organizations that rise up and they enlist the help of entertainers. So you may say that entertainer is supporting that cause. Are they really supporting that cause or are their handlers telling them to support that cause? When you see an entertainer who typically hangs around this group of people, suddenly they're hanging around a totally different type of people who they have the least bit in common with. That's a red flag. You know that she's always been a sister from around the way. And then suddenly she's so proper speaking and she's this, that, and the other. That's because she was never a sister from around the way. <laughs> and those people that are around her, those are really the movers and the shakers behind the scenes who have financed her. You see, some of these entertainers said that, listen here. We got this one who's in bed with this one who's in bed with this one. They're all in bed together. Basically, they're all working on the same team, even though the appearance looks like there's some divisiveness. The appearance looks like there's all sorts of controversy and beef and so forth. You have individuals who have taken street beef, if you will, and utilize the same mechanics behind street beef into corporate beef. <laughs> People beefing. You see, uh, an example of this sort of thing would have been Tupac and Biggie. Manufacture, create beef, then everybody get together and create peace. You see, beef sells, drama and trauma sells. And this is why they continue to perpetuate all sorts of foolishness. They show one face. They being those that are behind the scenes working the entertainers, they show one face before the masses, but quite a different one behind the scenes. And the entertainers know this. And sometimes this other face or many faces is so shocking and disturbing, torments them. They can't believe what they've seen. They can't believe what's out here. They can't believe what these elitists have kept from the public. And it hurts them so much, in fact, that some of them go into depressions. There are those who will specifically target individuals for the pure intent to spread a message. And then what they do is for that message to keep flowing from the lips of that entertainer. 
they will give them tricks and they'll give them treats. And then if they don't want to do after a while, then here comes a torment. And we've seen that time and time again. Now, God's people who decide to go down that rabbit hole, God's people who say that, you know, I can't believe and this is terrible and I don't want to be a part of and all this other stuff. They are tormented all the more because you started off serving the one true God. And then by the time all of these individuals came into your life who were worldly, you decided to put your morals, your ethics, your faith on a shelf somewhere and go and follow darkness. And when you did without question, hey, you got the devil's tricks and treats. But when you started questioning, that's when they had to start tormenting. Dangling carrots over people's heads. Putting stress on top of stress so that somebody has a meltdown of some sort. A lot of money on the line. We need you to be here. We need you to do this. We need you to do that. And don't question. We don't pay you to ask questions. We pay you to do what we tell you to do. And he who follows instructions wins the bag. If you can see this in the corporate sect, then you can see this in mainstream media. If you can see this in your own family, then you can see it anywhere. And that's why I always come back to family type of conversation in many of these audios, because you've got family members who have a system of sorts in place long before you got here for some of you all. And that system in place is this is how we do things. And you know how some of your family members do things. You are in the in crowd as long as you make the family look good, as long as you make the cult look good, as long as you do what you're told. But the day that you step out, the day that you ask questions, the day that you start connecting things, the day that you don't like what's happening and you speak up for yourself is the day that you made an enemy of your family, of your coworkers, of your manager, of those investors, the boardroom. The people around the world, a national leadership, whoever, whatever. And I've always been one to question. And that's why it takes me longer to get jobs. <laughs> that's why sometimes I can't keep certain jobs because I'm not going to play around with any type of ethics. Come on. Some individuals have gotten away with dishonesty for years. They have used all sorts of tricks and sneaky ways to get people to do all sorts of evil things. You got people who are looking out for other people. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And the Lord sees. Now, this is where the spiritual side of things comes into play. Because when you are one who says, Abba Father, I love the Lord. God is my savior. God is my rock. He's my shepherd. And all of these things you talk about with regard to God and you bring him in to, for instance, the entertainment industry. <laughs> He's there to clean up. He's there to conquer. He's there to divide. He's there to avenge. He's not there to sit around and kumbaya with the devil. Although the devil would like that sort of thing. The devil wants you to sit at his table, to eat his food, to drink his drink. But there is always fine print. I told one of my relatives years ago, I said that whenever you get into a deal with one of these relatives, I said that relative always has fine print. And you've got to be the one that's paying attention to that fine print. And telling that relative what you will agree to and what you will not. You've got to be the one to draw the line in the sand. You got some relatives that they assume that because we are family, that you are supposed to call. You are supposed to come around. You are supposed to do everything that everybody else does. But let me tell you, when God is involved, when you are finally ready to go all the way with the one true God, what they believe that you're supposed to do is not what God wants you to do. So get ready. Get ready to ruffle somebody's feathers. Get ready to cause all sorts of confusion and bitterness and upset. In the atmosphere, all because you serve the one true God. And this same sort of thing happens in the entertainment industry. Why, oh, why did you pray and get God involved? Because you are there not to 
dance and sing and just dance and sing. But you're also there to cause all sorts of changes in the atmosphere, changes that the demonic does not want the likes of you to be doing, to be a part of, to promote, to rally up support. No, we have our agenda and our agenda does not include children of light. I know for some of you all, it's disturbing to see some people that you know sell their souls. And it's even worse when they're willing to hurt anybody to be on the top. And this is all the more reason why you got to safeguard yourself and protect yourself. Don't be so quick to go to a party with a relative. Don't be so quick to take a relative's money. Don't be that individual that's so quick to sign a contract with someone just because they know this one and they know that one. Because a lot of these individuals are losing money by the minute. By the minute. And they need you, us, more than we will ever need them. That's the real truth. And so flashing cars in front of you and homes and telling you about how successful they are and how we need to work together as a people and all of these things that they say, ultimately the goal is to get that mortgage paid, <laughs> to get that car note paid, to get their children's tuition paid. Notice it's they, they, and they some more, not you. Some of the movies and the music, all of the evil that is constantly promoted, what it does is it changes your mindset over time. And you don't think like you should, and you don't reason like you should, and you don't do the types of things that God speaks to you about because your mind is so distracted by the dark, the disturbing, the evil, you're traumatized. Psychologically, I can't seem to stay focused on this long enough or that. The various electronic devices that also impact one's health. And you got entertainers who try to tell you some things. And then along comes a group that says he's a quack or she's stupid or this one's on drugs or this one is crazy or whatever else. They tell you all these things because they are privy to information. Information that certain elitist groups don't want you to know about or that they laugh or they, you know, know that they're hurting people and they don't care. So the entertainer comes out of his or her role to warn the public and then they're demonized or they're told that they're crazy or they put them on some kind of drugs with crazy side effects. So this way, all you'll see is somebody who's out of control. You see, there are ways that people handle one another. Some of that information is out there, right, on the Internet. You can look it up, how to handle this type of personality, how to handle that. And if that information is available to you, then don't you think that those that own a celebrity, don't you think that that information is available to them Plus some to put somebody back in the box, to control them, to get them to do whatever they want, when they want, how they want. And so here we are as believers. We're praying and we're asking the Lord for divine protection. We're asking the Lord for guidance. We're asking the Lord to give us the insight to be able to navigate our way through situations, to have favor where we need favor, to perform kingdom business. There's so many things we pray and we ask the Lord about. And it's Shandaba Wolf, guess. 
and somebody before you sign a contract or before you encourage someone to be the next greatest, wonderful, top notch, a list, whatever. I suggest you talk to the one true God because that could be blood on your hands for encouraging that person to go down that rabbit hole. That could be blood on your hands all because you wanted your family's last name to be up in lights. I told a couple relatives about all of these things because I know how bad they want to make some things happen. But you've got to know who you are and what you stand for and what you won't tolerate from the very beginning, long before you have a team of people all around you. That's for somebody, not for everybody. Some of you all, you're just on the outside looking in, you're just listening. But there are those who you've got to be grounded in your faith and be willing to say no and be willing to deal with the consequences of saying no. You should never love an ambition, a dream so much that you're willing to die for it. And we're not talking about a godly dream, a godly ambition here. We're talking about worldly. I don't love anyone or anything so much that I'm willing to die for it. But when it comes down to godly business, what God wants all day, every day will die for it. Jesus did. Hallelujah. Jesus did. And some individuals are going into industries as martyrs. They are called to go in and shake up things. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so I ask that the blood covering of Jesus be upon each and every individual as you're embarking on your journeys in life. Doesn't have to be the entertainment industry, but any journey. May the Lord be with you as well as those that you love. May his angels encamp all around you. May you receive the wisdom, the understanding, the protection that you need, the boldness that you need. The strength mentally and physically to endure, to be the best, to be the greatest as God leads. I thank you as always for taking time out to listen. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, share. And we do have links in the description box for those who would like to give. Thank you.